When looking at the phase two clinical trials for dutasteride titled, quote, the importance of dual 5-alpha reductase inhibition in the treatment of male pattern hair loss, results of a randomized placebo-controlled study of dutasteride versus finasteride, unquote, by Ellis A. Olson et al. Both scalp levels and serum DHT levels are observed on both 5 mg oral finasteride and oral dutasteride, with oral dutasteride being tested at 0.5 mg and 2.5 mg. In the context of scalp DHT, dutasteride doses led to a significant suppression of scalp DHT levels in comparison to placebo, with the effect increasing with the dosage. Specifically, 0.1 mg dutasteride and 5 mg finasteride resulted in similar reduction of scalp DHT levels by 32% and 41%, respectively. So to rephrase this, 0.1 mg dutasteride and 5 mg finasteride reduced a similar range of DHT between 32% and 41%. Now, you may notice that this is talking about 5 mg oral finasteride, which not many people use. That is the ProScar dose, the Propecia dose that's commonly used for androgenetic alopecia being 1 mg is also similar in the scalp DHT reduction levels, but I'll touch on that later in the video, so just keep that in mind. Don't freak out by, oh, this is just 5 mg oral finasteride, that means I'm using 1 mg, that means I'm, I'm missing out. No, don't freak out, we'll talk about that later on in the video. But anyway, returning back to the video. Higher doses of dutasteride, 0.5 mg and 2.5 mg, reduce scalp DHT levels by 51% and 79% respectively. So that's pretty substantial when you're trying to combat scalp DHT levels. Moreover, all active treatments, including dutasteride in varying doses from 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 2.5 milligram, and finasteride led to increases in scalp testosterone levels ranging from 23% to a staggering 222%. And also, as a side note, don't freak out about scalp testosterone levels. I'll touch on that later on in this video because also people freak out that, you know, their scalp T levels go up and then they think, oh, I'm going to lose all my hair because, you know, scalp testosterone is going up and testosterone is an androgen and it's androgenic alopecia. So that means testosterone is going to target my hair follicles. And I'm no, no, we'll touch on that later as well. Anyway, importantly, there was a strong inverse correlation observed between the reduction in scalp DHT concentration and the increase in hair count as well as a positive assessment from panels and investigators. These correlations were statistically significant with a p-value of less than 0.001. Now, in the context of serum DHT, dutasteride significantly suppressed serum DHT levels compared to placebo, with the highest suppression at 24 weeks observed in the 0.5 milligram group being 92%, and also in the 2.5 milligram group being 96.4%. So the doses of dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams was 92% reduction in DHT, and the doses of dutasteride at 2.5 milligrams resulted in 96.4% reduction in DHT. So even at something like 0.5 milligrams of dutasteride, you're getting a, a huge amount of serum DHT suppression, and it barely goes up when you increase the dose to 2.5 milligrams. Because I mean, yeah, 92% versus 96% is, you know, there's a difference, but still, you're, you've crushed a shit ton of serum DHT. But when it came to the 0.1 milligram dutasteride and finasteride groups, they both showed similar results of suppressing DHT levels by 69.8% and 73% percent respectively. So they somewhat had similar reductions in serum DHT, like we saw in scalp DHT reduction levels as well. Meanwhile, all treatment groups saw an uptick in serum testosterone levels, with the most substantial increase in the 2.5 milligram dutasteride group, going up by 27.5 percent serum testosterone. Notably, serum DHT levels negatively correlated with hair count and assessment of vertex hair growth. By 36 weeks post-treatment, serum DHT levels had nearly returned to baseline for most groups, except the dutasteride 0.5 milligram group and 2.5 milligram groups. For these groups, returning to baseline took a median of 86 and 155 days respectively. And just as a side note, we can probably attribute that to Dutasteride's long half-life, which I'll touch on later in the video. But just to say it now, Dutasteride has a half-life of 
I think five weeks. And finasteride, its half-life is between six to eight hours. So even when you stop, you know, using dutasteride, it has an extended period in terms of suppression in serum DHT levels. And even at that, it will take a while for it to also kick in when it's trying to induce its effects. So just keep that in mind. If you take dutasteride, its half-life, its mechanism of action is a bit more extended than finasteride. <laughs>